and welcome to the Thirsty Bitches Podcast, where we talk about anything under the sun, from books to entertainment to self-help and even a little spice. I'm Victoria. I'm Kira. And I'm Catalin. And today we are doing our first ever Thirsty Confessional. Now, within our Discord server, we decided to put up a form for all of our members to fill out where they could submit stories, questions, whatever, to whatever topic we have for that month. And this last month, we have done funny sex stories. So today we're going to read some of these submissions. We did give our members the option to remain anonymous or to share their name, but we've decided for the purpose of recording, we're going to leave their names out of it. But if they would like to share who it was for what story within the server, they're more than welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. But before we get started, we are going to do our quenchable moments. And if you're new here, a quenchable moment is a funny or exciting thing that has happened to us in the last week or so that we want to share with each other and with you. So to start us off, Catalin, what is your quenchable moment? Um, so my quenchable moment is while I was looking through some boxes in my basement at my parents' house, I found my three original copies of Vampire Academy. They're in such good condition. Uh, do have, yes. Do I have the rest of the series? No, I remember nothing. Uh, I read you this. Only, you only read the first book. Yeah. I don't remember anything. Oh <laughs> nothing. Victoria, you can't talk. <laughs> Girl, I'm not gonna say anything. Mm-hmm. So, because several of you guys are reading it later this year, I thought I would join. Now that I know where my books are, well, now Man. you need the other three. You need the last three. I totally forgot yeah. about the dude and his soul patch. <laughs> you know so what? Cool. We got we got <laughs> knockoff Angelina Jolie and soul patch. I don't know what to tell you. These you know, original covers are iconic kind of normal look at the under eye (laughs) eyeliner look at that that waterline eyeliner let me just okay iconic iconic anyways (laughs) Anyways, victoria what was your quenchable moment this week so i finally got my order in from vanessa for those of you guys who don't know vanessa is also a candle maker she runs her instagram as in between candles <clears throat> and she makes book boyfriends and girlfriends. She makes candles, wax melts, room sprays, and occasionally like some other little goodies. But she sent me a gift and it was a giant Fenris candle. Oh my God. Is that three Fenris? wick? Yes, it is a three wick. Mm. So Fenris is my favorite scent. I really love cherry scents. Um, the black cherry Merlot from Bath and Body Works is one of my favorite candles of all time. And then she made this bad boy and I you know, have it everywhere. I've got literally four blocks of <laughs> the wax melt. Are you and serious? I have, yes. I've got four blocks, two candles, oh two room sprays, and then now this. So wow. I mean, it's Fenris. It is Fenris. Oh. It smells so good, you guys. You love a good Fenris. But yeah, I love it. <laughs> Anyways, Kira, what was your quantumable moment this week? Um, so I've been having a hard time picking between two because obviously like my most obvious one is Um, I had my 16 year old cousin here visiting me this last week for her spring break. And we went around and I took her on tours of different colleges because she's a junior in high school and it's that time. Um, She's probably going to stay in California. Who wants to move to Boston from Southern California? Um, You're not in Southern California though. You're in Colorado. So it's not much of a change for you. Um, I was the dumb, dumb who moved from Southern California to Boston and I'm about to get out of here in a few months. So, um, so that was definitely like my most obvious one, but we went to, uh, she's wild. We went to two hockey games while she was here. And the second one, we went down to the ice to watch the boys, um, warm up. And my favorite player that I have been following since 2010, um, when I saw him in the 2010, um, NHL drafts was down there because he just got traded this last year to the Boston Bruins Taylor Hall I love him so much we were down there direct eye contact while he was stretching his legs oh man I was like oh my god it's a good thing that you didn't bring me to something like that because I would be the asshole that would like put up a sign and be like she wants you to rail her Okay, well, he's engaged. <laughs> um, he's engaged. It doesn't mean and, anything. And if there is any like one in a million chance off chance that his um fiance 
less listens to this. Um, I love your view of this. <laughs> and I have <laughs> since I was 15. So <laughs> Mm, um yeah so I guess it's like a quenchable moment in a quenchable moment so it's with her and she was like here he just looked at you I'm like I know he just looked at me (laughs) and it was just so glorious I love about your fangirl moment yeah I'm wearing my new hoodie that I got Boston Bruins um they're my second team my um OGs my number ones the Los Angeles Kings I love them so much but I have to say if I go to a Seattle Kraken game there's a good possibility they get they might get bumped to second and Bruins Ooh. might get bumped down to third. I know. I know. Shocker. Man. Shocker. <laughs> um, Brandon Tanev is on that team. Uh, Brandon Tanev, if you're, if you're listening to this. My name is Kira Marshall. Uh, I am 27 years old, and I am single as a Pringle. <laughs> hey <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right let's just you know speaking of men that we have a deep appreciation for men <laughs> let's just, I, I say, know it's I unfortunate so let's just get into today's topic very very excited to go over some of these stories because personally I don't really I have too. any funny stories I'm so excited because I haven't um I know Catalan's read through some of these I haven't read any of them <laughs> so I'm really excited um to see what some of these uh people have said so but before we get into the member confessions I know Kira you have a story I do you do <laughs> I do We're all ears. <laughs> I know oh my gosh okay so um you guys know my ex I talk about him quite a lot. Um, For those of you who don't know, I have had one serious relationship at this point in my life, Um, almost five years. He was my first boyfriend, first kiss, first everything. Um, And very early on into our relationship, you know, obviously he was my first everything. He was my first time too. Um, I don't regret it because obviously like I loved him at the time and, you know, Mm -hmm. it meant a lot to me uh but early on in the relationship obviously like I didn't know what I was doing and he should have known what was he was doing then the day that I trust a man to know what's going on down there is, is <laughs> I'm, I'm very saying, swiftly never gonna happen okay so that's a lot of assumptions <laughs> <laughs> um I was also 20 years old so I had a lot of assumptions going into that shit anyways uh, um so I will preface this and say in our entire four and a half years, almost five years, um, the amount of times that we had sex does not equate to the amount of times that I got off. Actually, I got off maybe less than half of those times. So that's just to help you. I'm pretty sure that's accurate to 90%. (laughs) I know. Um, So basically it's early on in the relationship. I think we're like three or four months in. And I learned really quickly that the only way that I could get off is if that I was on top Mm -hmm. and he had to be sitting up Mm -hmm. because he doesn't know how to use his pelvic bone. Apparently, (laughs) if you're listening to this, bud, get your shit together. (laughs) You know who you are. Read some romance books, please. Oh my God, he would get so mad at me. He's like, you don't want to have sex, but you read all those romance novels. And I'm like, they're better in the books, bud. Facts. So we're pretty, pretty early on in the relationship and he puts me on top. And for some reason, it's just like not happening. It's just really not happening. Um, and then he came before I did. Oh, geez. And so we waited a few minutes and he was able to get hard again. And so we immediately put me back on top. Well, <clears throat> your girl wasn't as comfortable getting on top as she got later on. And uh, y'all, I bent his dick. <laughs> I literally, <laughs> we, I, I think we almost had to go to the hospital. Like it, it was his erection, like bent. <laughs> inside of me as I was sitting down on it like I could feel it go <laughs> you, wait speaking of bending did you know that some guys can crack their dicks like a glow stick yes that's disgusting I just <laughs> saw that tiktok and like, I was laughing like, and nothing no like now I feel like, like there's no 
I There's think no this, bone there. What are you no, I think this man really thought that he was dying. Like that's how bad he was reacting. Like <laughs> we did not finish after that point. We did not do anything. He laid there in bed holding his crotch for a good like hour. I mean, that's a reaction most men I seem to have though when they have any injuries. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, bent his erection pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> I was like my full weight sitting on top of that. Maybe that was karma's way of being like, you don't know how to use this. So I'm going to break it. And he didn't even learn <laughs> the amount of times that he would uh, come before I would while I was on top. And I would look at him and be like, did you come? He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I'm over this. <laughs> no wonder I stopped having sex with you, Let's bud. Say. The fuck? <laughs> Ladies, if you have a guy that's struggling to hold it in, cock rings are your friend. I'm telling you, get a cock ring. Hmm. Interesting. That'll that'll stave it off. Me with my next partner. I don't have, I don't Try have any it. right now. Listen, <laughs> you know, I do pretty I, good. I do pretty good with my own hands and my own toys. So yeah. I listen, I already get messages from some people like, can you help me? Can you walk me through what I need to do with these things? And I'm like, yeah, sure, bitch. Here's a whole <laughs> stuff. Go for it. Go forth and be merry. Go wild. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Catalan, you want to start us off with the first thirsty confession? Yes. Okay. It's not terribly long, Mm -hmm. but okay. So it says my boyfriend and I had been together for about three to four months before his birthday to celebrate. We took a weekend trip to the mountains and cooked ourselves a nice steak dinner, including our favorite Caesar salad. Later in the night, things were getting frisky and I was going down on him when bam, I threw up Caesar salad everywhere. (laughs) It is, all, it is all of us and the sheets. In turn, he proceeded to also throw up. Oh, oh no. <laughs> there's, there's a sentence left. Okay. There were chunks of senior salad everywhere, and we can't eat it without thinking about this. It's been two years, and I still have yet to live it down. Oh, <laughs> oh honey, you went too deep. <laughs> <laughs> much too fast deep throating too fast you should have let yourself Ooh. digest and you they always never... tell you don't go in the pool for an hour after you eat yeah same thing <laughs> with going same down thing. like don't not right after eating bad nope. <laughs> especially a big meal oh girl why do you think they only eat like tiny finger foods before people most of the time they don't even eat before they have sex <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> Oh my god! Anyways, I hadn't bad. read the full of that. I read like the first three sentences. <laughs> oh, oh man, that sucks. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> All right, Kira, but you read uh, the next okay. one. <clears throat> I had been having an on and off thing with this guy that I used to date during college. There's quotation marks around date if you're listening to this. When I look back at that time, I realized that he was a huge asshole who liked making girls chase after him. But during college, I was admittedly very thirsty and he had a very big, you know what, girl, I know what. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. I know what. <laughs> so I ran, so I ran into him at a local bar and invited him to my dorm. My dorm room was actually in a sorority house that had a very strict, no boys in the bedroom rule. Girl, this is not looking good. <laughs> But it was spring break and there was only me, one of my sorority sisters, and our house mom in the house. Okay, if the house mom's there, eh, eh, no. no. Yeah. Hard so pass. I, <laughs> so I sneak him inside and take him upstairs to one of the empty rooms, which happened to be the room above the only other girl in the house's room as well. Why get a hotel? Why didn't you go back to your room? Why didn't you go back to his room? <laughs> Or his room, yeah. So we entered the room and spent a solid 45 minutes of doing the deed where he asked me to call him daddy. Okay, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I would be like, in, 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 no, that's not happening. Listen, <laughs> I am familiar with that kink. It really just depends on the dynamic of the people involved and yeah. what's going on. You can't just throw that to somebody at random. That's no. not, that's not okay. Okay, um... This was not the first time that a guy had asked me to call him daddy. So I did remember I was hella thirsty and he had the biggest dick I'd ever seen. Mm. (laughs) Anyways, I drive him home. And when I get back to my sorority house, my sorority sister proceeds to tell me that the walls and apparently the floors are very thin. And she heard everything we did. Honey, I saw that one coming from a mile away, (laughs) (laughs) including me moaning daddy for the majority of the interaction. Flash forward two years later. 
and I've graduated and was hanging out with the sorority sister from this story. She then reveals to me that our, our house mom had been mentioning to our other sisters once I had graduated and moved out of the house that she had known that I had snuck not one, but two men into the house and then proceeded to have sex with them. Safe to say I was a little upset with my house mom, but sharing my exploits with everyone. But I'm just glad that she didn't get me in trouble while I was still in the house. Oh, honey boo boo child. Oh my God. (laughs) You had balls. Yes. Oh my God. But when you get a dick that big, oh. It's hard. Listen, it's, it's hard to turn that away. Yeah. Oh my God. Then again, there is such a thing as too big. So ladies, be careful. Please be careful. Loob is your friend. Mm -hmm. But also if it's a campus sorority house, obviously it's been shittily built and the walls are shit. So why would you even go back? Yeah. No, I wouldn't use it. Nah. Anyways. Um, I'm pretty sure he has a bedroom somewhere. Yeah. (laughs) He has to sleep somewhere. Like. And I don't think he, I don't think he would have cared where you guys went. It's the fact that he was getting some, that he was probably like, yeah, yeah can go wherever the fuck yeah. you want. Most men, as long as they can get their dick wet, they really don't care. Exactly. Correct. Oh, All right, gosh. Victoria, you're up. This one's a shorty. I once many years ago, woke up to tell my then boyfriend that I'd had this lovely dream and I'd love to reenact it only to be told it wasn't a dream and I'd actually fallen asleep. <laughs> To be fair, though, given this particular boyfriend's skills or lack thereof, I was entirely unsurprised. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, um, no. Wait, but I want to know what the dream I know he was having too. was. If you're yeah. listening to this, we would like to know. Yeah, please feel <laughs> free to update us. Please, please. <laughs> yeah, because I would like to know what this dream was that was so great compared to his actual skill set. <laughs> we would love to. We would love to hear it. Story mm-hmm. time. <laughs> oh Part gosh. two. All right, okay. Catalan. All right. So it says funny sex stories. Sure, why not? My husband, then boyfriend, and I were long distance for a year at the start of our relationship. We met in high school and we went to college and he went to college a year before me. So naturally, when I started college and we lived in the same dorm, we acted like the horny young adults we were. We had sex a lot. So often that when we were late meeting our friends, they knew it's because we were doing it. Anyway, (laughs) my husband's room that year was technically sub ground level. It wasn't quite a basement, but it wasn't really first floor either. His room window was level with the ground outside. It's called garden level. Fun fact. Um, It also happened to face one of the busiest streets of cars and foot traffic. One afternoon we were doing our thing. It has nice little squiggly marks and asterisks. Uh, And three random guys outside stopped in their tracks, staring into the window, pointing their fingers and getting quite the show. We'd forgotten to close the curtains. We jumped up, closed them, and of course, got right back to it. We told our friends and everyone had a good laugh at our expense. A few weeks later, one of our friends was riding the bus and overheard a couple guys telling their friends about how they were walking down X Street and saw a couple going at it in one of the rooms at dorm name. He immediately knew they were talking about us and got to have even more laugh at our expense, which is fine because when he told us, we left too. We never forgot to close the curtains after that. <laughs> how mortifying. <laughs> That's terrifying. Oh, what a peep show. <laughs> Listen, I mean, you know, exhibitionism is for some people, but not for everyone. It's, it's intentional. No. For and sure. if we're doing it, you're paying. Oh, yeah, yeah truly. I would say I lived in a garden level apartment and always made sure the curtains were closed. <laughs> like Always. Uh, pass on that. I can't even imagine. That would suck. No. Oh that would God. suck so bad. <laughs> yeah. And then to go somewhere and hear other people talking about like, it, like, okay, great. The chances of that, yeah. <laughs> Let me just go take an apple on the highway real quick. <laughs> yeah. I would I would literally die of embarrassment. I'd be like, we're done. Oh my God. We're done. I'm going to take a long walk of a short bridge. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, Kira. Uh, this one's a shorty. Oh, it says JLA. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it's, not that, it's not bad. Just keep reading. Okay. Here. I was kind of excited because JLA, Jennifer L. Armentrout, for those of you who don't know, liked a picture I posted on Instagram and started telling my mom about it. 
While I was talking about the lemonade, honeydew flavored, I realized that there was no way I could tell my mom why the flavor was so funny. So I just said, well, one of the characters really likes honeydew melons. (laughs) And I quickly changed the subject while trying not to laugh at myself or my stupidity. God, now we have to explain honeydew. Damn it. I haven't even read the book and I know what honeydew oh, is. I feel like all of our God. listeners, will, I feel like our listeners will know what honeydew okay, is. Okay, well, for yeah. those of you that don't, in the books, apparently, Poppy apparently tastes like honeydew. And I don't mean like her skin, I mean her vagina. And I feel like that's like not sanitary. Like, I just feel like it's not mm-hmm. like a sanitary issue. It's just unrealistic. Also quick sidebar. I hate the fact that every fucking time Castile goes down on her, he looks up at her and there's a glimmer in his eye. And he says, honeydew, fuck off. We know. That's disgusting. Actually. We know we get it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, I can't stand it. <laughs> on to the next. <clears throat> so I have been a longtime reader of L.K. Hamilton and her Anita Blake series. When stories started, re- when stores started reopening during the first COVID summer, I treated myself to some of the recent releases in the series I hadn't read. This included Jason. I take myself to my nearest Barnes and Nobles, but I can't find where her books are. Fiction, horror, crime, romance. It's just, it's the snake in the self at this point. So I decide to ask for some help. The rep who is womaning the desk (laughs) is short, petite, a little older with a bright smile, cheery vibe, and reading glasses perched on the end of her nose. She begins to search the author titles I'm looking for. And then I watch as it gradually hits her what the books are about. Crime, horror, paranormal romance, and smut. (laughs) And this is written S-M-U-T in all caps with dashes (laughs) between. (laughs) Like the Joey Trebani gif, her smile slowly fades, her <laughs> eyes get really big, and she gets real quiet. I don't know how explicit the information she was reading was, but the woman certainly learned something in those seconds. She <laughs> quietly leads me to the section I needs, I need, points to the titles, and then quietly bits me a good day with minimal eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I was embarrassed, and she certainly didn't make me feel that way because she's a professional. I just kind of felt like I shocked a sweet librarian. I will never forget watching her expression (laughs) slowly transform from O to O. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to picture like this sweet little like old lady being like, I am (laughs) from the perspective of somebody that's worked at a bookstore that those moments are my favorite, especially as somebody that has read those books. Like I've not read the Anita Blake ones, but I've read her other ones. Mm Mm-hmm. And having customers come up to me and be like, um, can you help me find these books? And they try and describe them without actually describing them. I'm like, girl, I already know what's in there. (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) Don't be embarrassed. I got you. All right. The next story is starts with, oh, buddy, buckle up. (laughs) It's a big big one too. It is. Uh, It's multiple paragraphs. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh gosh. Um, in a galaxy far, far away called California. I was yeah, living from there. <laughs> and it is a galaxy of itself. Yeah, it is. Uh, I was living with my boyfriend at the time and we decided to get it on. We had had a nice dinner, had some wine, and we're ready to take it to the next level. Butt stuff. But as <laughs> most of you know, <laughs> you need to ease into that kind of play and not get too frisky too fast. So he Anything brought up- butt stuff. <laughs> That's it. Real mature guys. <laughs> we are adults. Are we? No. <clears throat> so. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. So he bought a bright pink, my favorite color, butt plug. He gets it going and we quickly move on from the back door to the front with the plug. I don't know why. Uh, talk about a yeast infection. I'm sorry, wait. <laughs> I don't know why, but he began using it in the main channel and I wasn't complaining. We had an amazing night and fell asleep a few hours later. Very happy. Flash forward to two weeks later. Oh no. (laughs) I wake up after a night of partying and cannot move. 
My back has gone out and I can barely breathe from the pain. My boyfriend was at work, so I called my roommate who helped me to the store so I could buy a back brace. I'm in so much pain, I go to my physician to make sure I haven't slipped a disc or worse. He tells me it's a muscle spasm, gives me some muscle relaxers, and sends me on my merry way. The muscle relaxers do nothing. I lived on Advil. I lived in Advil stretches and the back brace for the next week. Then one night while lying in bed. Wait, this is three weeks long. <laughs> uh huh. Then one night while laying in bed, I get a sharp pain in my abdomen. No. I had several ovarian surgeries, so I wasn't too worried until I got another very sharp pain of pain. I feel around my abdomen and try to see if the pain is coming from my ovaries, uterus, or even appendix. The pain is coming from ju- from below my uterus, which is weird. Absolutely not. I can see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> so I decide to go on an exploratory mission. I feel around the outside of my vagina to see if there's any pain there. There's none. I start feeling my way inside and make it about halfway up when I hit a barrier. Not no. So- <laughs> I freak out. My first thought is that I have a tumor inside my vagina and I need to go to the hospital, but I take a deep breath and feel again for pain. And when I press on the lump, there's no pain. I scratch it a little and don't feel anything. Horror takes over as I look at my boyfriend and ask, where's the butt plug? (laughs) Three weeks? He looks at me and confirms my fear. I don't know. I haven't been able to find it. Well, you just did. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) literally. Guys, these things are called butt plugs <laughs> not any hole you want to put it in plug <laughs> okay I quickly fill him in to what's been going on the last three minutes and he takes over the exploration he puts a finger and confirms the butt plug is still inside of me oh, I am no. <laughs> appalled I am shaking I tell him to get it out and he hooks his finger around it and starts pulling and oh. it won't budge he no. pulls harder. It won't budge. Oh, baby. I'm shaking and sweating from the pain and discomfort and tell him just to get it over with. I hold on to the bed frame and he yanks the butt plug out of me. I scream bloody murder and run to the bathroom and throw up. I go back to bed and crawl into a pillow. We never use the plug again. I'm sorry, <sighs> but it, you know how when guys are just like, oh, they like, because someone like kicks them in. That's uh-huh. me, right? I'm literally. Yeah, you literally so like just ran away from the <laughs> Also, what an unfortunate reason to have to hold on to the bed frame. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> Guys, this is why we don't put butt plugs in areas that are not meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> like, if it's your first time doing anal, oh like, please be more choosy about the toys that you get. And just get something that doesn't go all the way in your body. Like get something that you can hold on to and easily remove. I'm and don't forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's not. Also, place, don't go back and but, forth. That's just asking for a yeast infection. Ladies, please don't let the man do that. Not put a butt plug in our hoo-ha. Okay. <laughs> that's just not. Right. So that's the end of the story. I'm oh you're, my god. Oh my you're next. God. <laughs> How are we supposed to follow that up? I don't know. Oh my God. Okay. (laughs) This is a short one. All right. I tried to save some money by learning how to wax myself. Oh, that God. already is starting <laughs> on a bad. I we might have just this, one this conversation. <laughs> we were just having this conversation in like self and like, yes, in like the self care. Channel, yeah weren't we mm-hmm. no. yeah no we were because people were asking about waxing and i came and hot and was like guys don't do your own brazilians and people were like what's wrong with that and i'm what's like wrong with that? do you want to end up in the ER? because i do you want the way 20 page paper because okay Victoria can write it for you <laughs> um a 2500 emergency department bill later because i almost tore off my labia and had to get stitched back together this is why people this is why wow. my mom had to drive me to the ed while my husband was working he then came home freaking out that blood was everywhere and i wasn't answering my phone that's the last time i tried to take a shortcut and save money guys i will shout it from the rooftops every single time you always go to the professional no matter what it is whether it's your hair whether it's waxing whether it's a plumber a technician like you're not going to ask the painter 
to fix up all the pipes in your house. You're just not going to ask them to do that. No. So why would you be like, yeah, I can wax myself. And it's going to cost you more in the long run. Especially where you can't really see necessarily the whole thing. <laughs> Even as an esthetician, I am all for people trying, people trying things on their own, but there are certain areas of your body where you don't do it yourself. Like you want to try wax waxing your, your leg? Try your waxing armpits. your leg. Sure. You want to try waxing your face? Try waxing your face. Don't wax your own fucking vagina. It's don't the, the, do that it. skin there is so like even most professionals don't do it. Yeah. I've talked to estheticians that have been estheticians for over a decade and they still don't do their own Brazilians because it's that dangerous. Nothing to the person who like sent in the story. Like we're not, I, I just want you to know if you're listening to this. We're I'm not glad like that you're okay. You. And that I, we're know. so happy that you're okay. It's a lesson learned, but it's a lesson learned that everyone can learn from. <laughs> yes. Please go to the professional. I have the same discussion with people when it comes to like their hair. I'm like, don't don't bleach your own hair guys don't do it like if you're gonna use box dye use box dye but make sure one you're telling your hairstylist yes when you go see them that you have used box dye oh you need to don't be make that, with that uh i don't have a hairstylist i get my hair cut once every year and a half so <laughs> see but you do it yourself and that's like my aunt does her own um oh my friend does my hair it needs to be yes <laughs> my aunt my aunt will do her own roots and she does it with box dye but she has done it for years she will continue to do it she will not go have someone do it for her and I'm like yeah that's fine if you like the way it looks and that's what you're gonna do and that's what you're gonna do mm-hmm. but once you decide to go get something done by a professional be honest just be upfront about everything you have put mm-hmm. in your hair yeah yeah because See- if you say no I'm never done that you and they do a strand out. touch when they do a strand test and they're just like why does your hair look like this <laughs> but you're supposed to not have anything in it mm-hmm. no they know they're not stupid yeah well um, you could potentially fry your hair off but yeah like seriously when it comes to waxing waxing is the one thing that I really harp on about please see a professional with that <laughs> I see a professional the first time I've been going to get myself waxed by my uh, waxer. Her name is Bunny. I've been seeing her for five years now mm-hmm. and I have never looked back. I have never shaved once since then because that was really painful the first few times, <laughs> but it's like really worth it now. And there's like no hair down there. So mm-hmm. highly recommend it guys. And it, they're not that expensive. No, not they're either. definitely cheaper then going to the ER <laughs> $2,500 emergency room bill. Yeah. Just yeah. going to put that out there. All righty. Next one. Okay. This is short. So hungover and still very nauseous. Didn't think anything of it until I started to feel as if I'm going to puke. So as I'm going down on this dude, I proceed to vomit onto his dick. Needless oh. to say, I didn't hear from him <sighs> afterwards. <laughs> I, what is it with the stories in line up with people listen these are the things in the order that they were submitted so (laughs) did you realize this was a common occurrence the fact that we have multiple (laughs) only two dick vomiting (laughs) stories apparently it's more common than we thought it was oh my god what are you doing to make yourself throw up Guys, don't go down on somebody if you're feeling nauseated. Don't go down on somebody when you've just eaten. Yeah. It's like getting into the pool. You need to give yourself at least 30 minutes to let it digest. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. You got to give yourself uh, time. The next one is also very short. So it says, the other day I was reading a smutty scene and my partner allowed me to stroke him off while I was reading. I don't have anyone I can tell, but I fucking loved every minute of it. He didn't mind it either. I had to tell someone. Thank you girl i that's not a horror story but we appreciate it we appreciate that it says funny it's was the yeah funny was the amount of times that when i was in my relationship that i was like yeah i'm ready for for a little fun time was a lot until it was (laughs) not a lot but yeah like i get that and honestly partners are just like you want to have sex while you're reading the book? All right, let's go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can I learn anything from that? Probably. Yeah, honestly, more men need to do that. 
<laughs> guys take note take yes. note right. start reading our books you'll learn something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right Kira dated a personal that nah, don't even want it <laughs> Why do I have this one? I don't know. Let's just have the order worked out. <laughs> Guys, if you don't know, okay, to all of our listeners that don't know, I was in a long-term, my one long-term relationship, literally the only relationship I've ever had was with a man that worked at a gym <laughs> and he was a bodybuilder and he was really into caloric intake and doing all those things. And needless to say, he gave me disordered eating because of the relationship, um, <laughs> And he was very much like into all the physique stuff. So now I'm reading a story about that. I don't date people you meet at the gym. I don't go Just to the gym. Don't. So, I don't go to the gym. Not a problem. Don't. <laughs> okay. Dated a personal trainer who is really into healthy food and working out and such. Yeah, that's kind of their lifestyle. It's their whole ass personality, guys. After going down on me once, in all seriousness, head still between my knees, he said, I wonder what your caloric intake is. The woman was too stunned to speak. (laughs) I'm honestly not surprised that that came out of this man's mouth the way it did. I, the audacity of gym bros is they have like the confidence of a mediocre white man but like they are mediocre white to like the like the 10th degree like it's like so much worse because they're just like look at me i'm in the gym and i'm getting jacked and i'm like oh look at me i'm like bitch you are no all i have to say to that um is there's a time and a place to ask that question and that is not when you're between between my legs no (laughs) no So I'm like, you're in a really good place for me to just put my foot in your face and kick you off. Right? Like, like yeah. I can, I could kill you. I'm like, you know, that leg know. press machine, that leg press machine that we know. Yeah. I know how to use that too. Get the fuck off of me. Talk about bitch. having my thighs as earmuffs. Oh my God. I That's hate the that. worst. All right. Man. I have the last two. Okay. Well, the last two from the forum, Catalin has an extra story from her friend. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right. So my husband and I have been married for almost seven years. We've been together for 10 and I wish I could say this awkwardness at least happened when we first started dating, but it was actually just last year. No. So we were doing the nasty and we had switched from penetration to oral with him being the giver of that. Well, mm-hmm. apparently the initial D to V portion air got pushed in. What was <laughs> new was when he, you pushed my, <laughs> when he pushed my knees up towards my chest and opened <laughs> it, pushed out that air and I straight up queefed in my husband's face. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Not a small dainty one either, but he ignored. It was long and loud. Oh married or not God. I just about died he was a gentleman and played it off well switching to something else because he knew I wasn't going to relax enough for oral anymore we laugh about it now but at the time I just wanted the earth to open up and swallow the hole <laughs> listen oh. I want to just acknowledge the fact that queefing during sex happens way more often than like porn yes. shows us it's so normal and kudos to your husband for being a gentleman about it. Yeah. yeah. That's a real man. You married a good That's one. That's a real one. That's a real yeah. one. <laughs> That's a real one. All right. Last <sighs> one. I had an intimate dream about one of my work superiors and it was freaking me out. We didn't actually bang in the dream or anything. He got in bed with me and cuddled me and it was absolutely bizarre, but the dream me didn't hate it. He's attractive, but older than me. And I'm truly not at all interested. We're both in happy relationships, but it's thrown me for a loop at work. Dreams are so weird. Dreams are so weird. And I literally treat people differently for days if they've been in my dreams. I'm just like, "Mm, I cannot have a normal interaction (laughs) with you right now. Because every time I look at them, I'm just like, hi. I don't know if I've ever had a dream like that about a person that I know. I don't think I I have. And it's not even just like sexual ones. Like I've just had really weird dreams with people mm-hmm. sometimes. And I'm like, I can't interact with you today. It's just going to be a no. Too close <laughs> to reality. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I just constantly dream about getting railed by Draco. So I was gonna we, say, mm, literally, I what it could be. <laughs> I'm I'm over here just like waiting for her to find a way to input Draco into the conversation every time I mean, we talk. We should really keep a tracker for the episodes. Honestly. I feel like we should. <laughs> no, I'll add I'll add a counter from here on out. Okay, I feel like we need Draco. to, and then at the end of the year, like um. Like the, compile the them all ep- together. Like, the last episode of the year. <laughs> can be a like, compilation, compilation of me saying, okay, but Draco. Draco. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it'd be really funny. At the, like our last episode of the year, we could be like, and this is the amount of times that she has said Draco this year, guys, <laughs> just on the show. When we have a whole fucking the limit episode, does not so. exist. The limit, limit does not exist, not, truly. No, it really doesn't. All right, Catalan, hit us with your friend's story. We're ready. Okay. So in college, my friend got her nipples pierced. Oh, God. Um, while she was hooking up with one of her fun buddies, uh, somehow he pulled her piercing no. out. Absolutely not. Sideways. Oh. <laughs> and and all. You, I am literally clutching my boobs right now. <laughs> Same. she's told me the story multiple times multiple times she then proceeded to tell me just the other day that uh he put the piercing back in like the ring back in but he didn't like take off the end so it was like oh, so no hot. but she's she was telling me that um she couldn't feel a thing because she had, i've heard she that from a lot of people that they can't feel it yeah so like she couldn't feel it when he pulled it out or put it back in (laughs) okay i'm confused did he just like slide it out of the hole or did he rip it out he it somehow like must have stretched a little bit and it like slid out but the okay i'm imagining like i'm imagining like full-on rip like that whole. i'm imagining butt plug but with the nipple (laughs) (laughs) No, but she had like, I guess like a bar or something. So it had like yeah, bigger ends and like, bar. yeah, the whole end came through. And then he just like in his, whatever no. mindset he was in, he just put it back in wholesale rather than like taking the end off. But she was like, oh. I couldn't feel any of it. And I'm just sitting there like, please well, stop. At least she couldn't feel it. And it wasn't like what I was thinking where yeah. he had just straight up ripped it oh, right out of no. her nipple. No. This is why I don't have piercings, guys. This is why I don't have any piercings. The amount piercings. of time she has told me this story, and every time I end up sitting like this, I'm just I, like, ugh. I'm like, I get it. I know what I'm happened. over here. I'm over here clutching all my private bits, being like, <laughs> dude, stop pulling shit out. Stop putting, don't put it in and don't pull it out. I don't want yeah. it. Oh my gosh. But yeah, she gave me permission to, to share that. And, um, <clears throat> Yeah, your friend is wild. Well, I think that's enough sexual, <laughs> funny horror stories for today. I'm gonna like curl up in a ball. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. We were so excited to see everyone to sub- submit to our form. Um, of course, you can find that over in Thirsty Bitches Bulletin. And we are actually going to be closing today's this month's topic and changing it over to a new one, which will be secrets that I will take to my grave which I am very excited for. I feel like that's such a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> it honestly, is. but I'm excited because I have some of those. I'll be honest. I'm I feel excited. like the next few that we have are going to be so good because we yeah. just closed the form for Emma the asshole. Yeah. Now we're going to do secrets, take to the grave. And then we have like holiday themed ones that are going to be coming up during the fall season. It, I'm yes. so excited. Yeah, it'll be very good. But like I said, you can find that over in the Thirsty Bitches Bulletin. That'll be in the podcast channel in the discord the podcast mm-hmm. section so yes. make sure to hit us up there and talk to us about it and of course yeah. you can be completely anonymous on the form you do not have to share your discord name your real name whatever if you would like to you can but we will not be outing you unless you know you decide to claim yourself when you listen to the episode and talk with everybody so mm-hmm. it's fully up to your dis- your disclosure anyways Kira what is today's affirmation so today's affirmation goes great with what we've listened to today awesome <laughs> i feel like i always pick like really good ones that like kind of just fit with a the theme without even realizing that i do that yeah so today's affirmation <laughs> no i literally pick them like as we're recording the episode perfect <laughs> oh my god it's a good one <laughs> I treat my body like the sacred space it is and honor my inner goddess with rest, movement, sex, and laughter. I love and respect my body. 
Nice. Let's love and respect All our right. bodies by not putting things where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> So thank you all for submitting forms and for joining us today. Make sure to tune in on Tasty Tuesdays and Thirsty Thursdays for all new episodes and be sure to subscribe and follow us on our socials listed in the description. Make sure you also like, rate, and leave us a review for the podcast to help boost us across the platforms. Please remember to have a lovely day and stay thirsty, bitches. <laughs>